Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the Jake's Take with Jacob Ayesar podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Ayesar, the chief content producer and writer of jakesake.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on our YouTube channel, please subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. And if you're listening to this on an audio platform, please download this episode, please subscribe, and please give us a five-star rating. I really appreciate it. I am so thrilled today because... We, I've been following this person from our next guest for a, for a while, so I'm so happy we're finally meeting virtually. He is the founder of Fit Lab Coaching, and as of this recording, he has over 18,000 Instagram followers, and he's the host of the Lean 365 podcast. So please help me welcome Fit Lab Coaching founder, Chris Wright, to the podcast. Thank you for that intro, Jacob. It's an absolute pleasure to be on, and uh, thank you for the invite and uh, inviting me onto your show. I'm sure we're going to be able to share a lot of value. Absolutely. It's such a privilege to talk with you. So guys, before we start our conversation, Chris and I have known, have followed each other back and forth for over three years on Instagram. Yes, it has been three, isn't it? Is that how long it's been now? Yeah, yeah I always see your videos, been. see your videos pop up quite a lot, like some of your training and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it looks like you're doing well over the other side of the world. Thank you so much. Like yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I did for the first time since I had an ankle injury back in April, Five by 195 back squats. Yeah, that's really impressive. Good work. <clears throat> I've not done a back squat heavy for a little while now. I don't know if you're aware, but I've, I've had a bit of an injury. So yeah, just getting back into my training. But I'm sure we'll get there. I've hit those kind of numbers in the past. So I'd like to get there again. But that's very impressive. So good work on that. Thank you. And I always try and got, I, I always get problems because I there's certain influencer, fitness influencers besides you and size mm. my friends that are American Ninja Warrior athletes or like fit or challenge as challenge athletes and I always send them my PR videos. So hopefully I don't bother everybody or I like, don't bother you with all that because I know you have a lot of clients. No, not at all. I think it's great to celebrate your wins and that uh, I'm all for putting stuff on platforms and especially when you hit some big numbers and stuff like that. That's what, that's what social media is for, right? We want to share our wins and our success, especially in fitness. Absolutely. So speaking of fitness, when did you get interested in fitness? How did that happen? involved in the desire to go into bodybuilding? I've always been into fitness. So I've always been into sport. Um, when I grew up, I played a lot of sports when I was younger. So I was playing uh, rugby, football, tennis, water polo, all that kind of stuff, really. So I was always a very active kid. Um, I never really played a sport, I'd say, like a really high level, but I just played a lot of them. Um, and I think from there, that then grew into me getting into the gym. So I think I got my first gym membership when I was about 16 years old. I think the initial thought behind that was I wanted to get better at rugby. I think that was my best sport. So I wanted to try and I don't know if you, rugby is not that big in the States, but in the, in the UK, it's a big sport. So that was my initial kind of reaction to get into that. And then I just really fell in love with the process, to be honest, like really enjoyed um, seeing myself get stronger, seeing my body change. And then from there, I think it just kind of led on to me going to the university, studying sports science, which was then after that, how I got into the fitness industry. So then went into personal training and then Along that point, it was when I did my first and last uh, bodybuilding show, which was in 2019. Um, and as I say, I've only done one competition in which I learned a lot from, but it's, it's probably not something that I see myself doing again. But at the same time, I like to challenge myself. I like to you know try different things. And I'm glad that I put myself through that process. And then from there, I think the career has just kind of led into different paths and, and got me to obviously where I am today. And yeah, uh, obviously living in Dubai and the founder of FitLab, which I'm yeah, excited to, to keep pushing forward. I bet that, and speaking of, well, first of all, competition-wise, I'm glad that you know your limits as well, because I did two CrossFit competitions and stopped. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, obviously, depending on the competition, but for me, it's just the restriction I didn't enjoy. Um, I think I didn't like that kind of bodybuilding lifestyle. And for some people, I absolutely have you know, loads of respect for that but it kind of just led me down a way I saw myself in a way I didn't like afterwards I didn't really know how to deal with the kind of the post bodybuilding stage after that so it's just not something that I think is really conducive to where I want to get to but um yeah like you know these competitions at any time these things happen we learn a lot and um yeah it was it was great to obviously go through that process and just something that maybe not again, but CrossFit could be something that I see myself get into at some point, um, but not for the moment, for sure, whilst I'm still nursing a little bit of an injury. Um, but yeah. I totally understand about that. I totally understand. And like, you would dominate, my friend. You would, do I have a feeling you would, uh, you would dominate. And like, I try my best because with me, 
I have a competitive side. And unfortunately, the dark side of that is like challenging the people I admire the most, like a Simon Cowell, a John Howard Stern, a Christian Aguilera, Rosie O'Donnell, and all five of them. I love them completely deaf, but they all have a little bit known in their industries as Devos and Divas. Yeah. And I rub my coaches the wrong way. Yeah, 100%. No, I agree. Are you looking to do any more competitions yourself or are you kind of just set with your different goals? At the I am reti- I'm retired because the thing is I'm 35, I almost 35 and I don't want to get into trouble. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Is that just like injury related or just because you've sort of got your goals in different places at the moment? And my goals and is to be is to try to be as healthy as possible and to still and and to enjoy myself. Like yeah, I have a huge. I admit I'm a sugar holic, so I love them, and I have a huge coffee problem at it. So I yeah, need to like I need to have my sweets. And yeah. the thing is, like I'm not going to go do stuff that's not going to make me like cut stuff out of my life because that makes me miserable. Yeah, of course. No, I 100 agree. I think that was the issue with me when it came to bodybuilding. I like to enjoy the finer things in life and that restrictiveness wasn't really in line with what I wanted to do like I think that when you've got more of a performance mindset or you're looking to do more endurance sports and stuff like you can make the the fun foods and stuff work around it especially coffee and stuff like that but um yeah for me I think that was one of the reasons as to why I to say like glad I did it and got lots of respect for people that, that go on stage and do that and for some people it's obviously they enjoy it a lot but for me it's just yeah not something I'll probably see myself doing again but I massively enjoy uh, getting lean for things like photo shoots. That's a big part of what we do at Fit Lab. We coach a lot of clients for photo shoots because I feel like that's very personal to each person. You know, like you're working through your own journey. You're not necessarily being judged by someone else. And it's still a similar goal in, in that you're working towards fat loss, but you're not necessarily got the pressure of, of going on stage and doing all that kind of stuff. So I still like to push myself to extremes. I think it's just important maybe, you know, not to put your pressure on self and certain areas maybe they're not always going to sort of be conducive to where you want to get to. Bodybuilding for me was a quick realization that it's not one something I want to pursue in the future. I totally agree with that. And we'll get to the photo shoots in a bit, but however, we got to talk about Fit Labs coaching origin story. So can you please share that with my audience? Yeah, of course. So, I mean, Fit Labs started, I think it was at the, kind of at the end of 2020. So when we uh, had COVID after well, our first lockdown, um, I mean, I was doing a bit of online coaching at that point. So I had to pivot very quickly online due to COVID. Obviously, I wasn't able to operate face-to-face anymore. Um, and at the time, I was working under a brand called Right Athletic. So that was that's my surname, Chris Wright. So that's what we kind of started with. But what happened quite quickly is that the business grew fast. And um, I realized that I wanted to make it bigger than just me. So I didn't want it just to be about myself. And I wanted a name that obviously reflected that. I wanted to build an actual proper business instead of just a, you know, a name and one-man band kind of thing. So that's when I started to look and, and started to, you know, to think about where I wanted to go next. Um, in terms of actually why I went for Fit Lab, there's a few reasons for that. One of the reasons is because I did do a degree in sports science. So I did that, um, you know, study sports science for three years. So kind of wanted to maybe try and find something that kind of represented that a little bit as well about some of the theory and education that I learned in university. So I thought the lab bit came in quite well. Um, with that and then I just think that it, it, it seemed to have quite a nice ring to it so that's why we went with Fit Lab and yeah I mean since then we've uh, expanded nicely we've we've worked with over 500 clients um, building a team now as well I'm delighted that I've got my brother on board so we're able to operate together and really try and build something special now so yeah it's kind of just gone from this thing that I was um, building on my mum's table which is literally where I'm sat now being back in the UK in the exact space the exact spot that I started to build the business in um, you know, into something quite special now where, like I say, we're working with people from all over the world um, and, yeah, we're, we're impacting people's lives, which is, yeah, a very fulfilling position to be in, for sure. And as someone that has followed you throughout that journey, I'm so proud of all that stuff. And please tell Matt I said hello. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell him I'll tell him that he say hello, for sure. He's actually here at the moment as um, we're about to go and train legs quite shortly. So, yeah, I'll pass on the love. All right, perfect. So, and I'm very proud of all that you've done with those clients and all the work that you've done. So what have been some of the greatest challenges that you've faced breaking into the international fitness market? Because I bet the UK and the Dubai markets are way different than the American market. Yeah, for sure. I, I, and there's a few things really. I, I, I had a challenge right at the start of my fitness journey. So at the time, I didn't really see it. But right at the start, when I started my first employment job, I actually worked with David Lloyd. I don't know if you've heard of that chain it's a, it's a big chain in the uk um but actually the way that that turned that was my first job i ended up getting fired from that so 
that was me being employed as a PT. Um, and the, the, literally the start of my career, I thought I was going to go on to something quite big there. And then actually got fired for some pretty minor in the end. I didn't did, said that I did a pool test, signed, signed that I did it and actually didn't do the pool test. And they t- saw that as gross misconduct. So that was my biggest challenge. And that was like at the start, I suppose, of my journey. And I was only about 19 years old at the time when that happened. So I obviously had to overcome that. And that's when I went self-employed. So I went from working at David Lloyd into an employment um, at Pure Gym, which again is another chain that we've got around here. I, I suppose the second challenge was definitely COVID. And that was a big problem in the fitness industry. So my entire client base got wiped from me, you know, within a matter of days due to the restrictions. So obviously I was operating at face to face. That was that was where I was, where I was doing things. And then very quickly had to kind of change quite fast and then obviously moved online, um, which is where I'm at now. So that was tough. That was a big pivot. Um, I suppose that the other challenges I've kind of faced as well, it's just kind of a good thing, but my business grew very quick and it sometimes kind of, it almost grew quicker than I could probably handle and anticipate at the start. So we went through a big patch of growth um, kind of at the start of 22. And I don't think I was ready for that as well. So it's kind of, was a challenge for me as a person that I was actually operating at quite a high level. My business was, was just doing well, but I wasn't really at the stage, I suppose, as a person in my own personal journey to be dealing with that. But uh, you know, we've overcome and we've, we've obviously got to the position that we're in now. So they're probably some of the biggest challenges that I face is, of course, like all the time, I feel like I'm facing a challenge. I think just in general, running your own business, you always go through potential problems all the time. The start of this year, having got injured as well, that was, for me, that was challenging because that's the first time I've had a really serious injury, which has affected my own training personally. So that definitely set me back a little bit with business and my own personal development. But I'm one of those people that I kind of, if, stuff does happen you got you go through challenge you go through adversity i'm very much in the reality that that does make you a stronger person i think if you go through a life with no challenge and no problems then you're not ever really going to kind of reach that full potential um and i think every time these things happen you need to try and see the uh the potential mistake that's been made or you know what's happening and always try and learn from that so they're kind of the biggest things i think this happened nothing kind of on i suppose an international scale but a few personal problems that i've had in the past that I'm dealing with uh, hopefully pretty well as well. And you're doing an amazing job at that because I see you work. I see you grind. You are amazing. Yes. I appreciate that. I see you watch and do that. And I got to say, if you brought up the, because you, since you are based in you, since you visit the UK, but you are also now based in Dubai. So what are some of the, are there different, are there similar set of rules or there's any different very late? regulations for between working in those two countries yeah for sure so not really to be honest and i suppose that's a good thing so i set my company up i used a company which which set me up in dubai at the end of last year obviously most of my client base is all in the uk anyway um so i'm set up i'm in dubai in a free zone and it doesn't really change how i operate at all i don't operate with i haven't got any clients at the moment in the uae um i haven't expanded to there yet i'm not sure if i will at some point so really for me, like the difference of being in Dubai is, is pretty minimal. Um, apart from the time difference, obviously, you know, I don't need to kind of be with my clients in person anyway. Um, and I've, I suppose I've not really learned too much about what client base or regulations and stuff are like in Dubai. Pretty much the same as what I was doing before, but just living in a, in a hotter temperature and a nice environment for me. So that's why I ended up moving to Dubai. I went through a lot of change at the end of last year. Kind of always had Dubai on my radar a little bit. It was a place that I visited a couple of times just for kind of like business and mentorship trips and stuff like that. Um, and then it just kind of happened, got to a position in life, went through a breakup and then it just had the opportunity came to me where I could really do whatever I wanted. Like Fit Lab was in a position as to where it could be taken anywhere. You know, I couldn't, I was probably at a stage where it was a well-established business. And then, yeah, that's when obviously I, I took the plunge to to move to Dubai, which is where I am today. Well, not right now, obviously. I'm in, the, I'm in the rainy UK at the moment, but I was in Dubai up till about two weeks ago, which, yeah, it's a lovely place to, um, to to operate from. The thing is with me is I hate heat, so I would not last five seconds in heat Dubai. Yeah, it's a tough one. I'm, I'm not great in the heat, but the thing is with Dubai is that you can avoid it very well. So when I left, it was like mid-40s. It was absolutely boiling. You know, you wouldn't want to go out, but where everywhere is air conditioned and the country is, you know, completely set up so that you can operate from inside. It's got massive malls, you know, like you don't necessarily have to be in the heat. The only time you really need to be in the heat is when you, you know, walk to your car to get in it. So it's not, it's not too bad, but there was times where it's getting a little bit uncomfortable. So it's nice to come back to the UK, which is raining at the moment, but it's a very different environment 
Um, but you know, you, the UK and Dubai probably couldn't be further apart in a lot of ways. Um, I definitely prefer like the environment, the culture, um, the surroundings of being in Dubai. But at the same time, it's nice to come back to the UK and catch up with friends and family, do client events, which is like we've done over the weekend. So I, I like to have the, I suppose, the freedom of being able to travel towards both. But I'm, I'm warming, warming to Dubai a lot. <laughs> Excuse the pun. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So let's talk about our mutual love of podcasting. So when did you start Lean 365 podcast? And why did you decide it was time to launch a fitness podcast? And what have been some of the favorite episodes that you have recorded? Yeah, for sure. So I started a podcast, I think it's about over a year ago now. I'm about 40 episodes. So yeah, must have been around then. The reason I started it is because I've always loved podcasts, so I've always listened to them, and they're probably one of the biggest areas that I've learned from myself and my own personal development, like lots of different podcasters, both business, fitness. I always really enjoyed them, and I always felt like, you know, those, I suppose, authors in the words, pod- podsters, whatever, they, they got in my head a lot. I really started to, like, understand them a lot more. So when um, when listening to those, I decided, actually, you know what, this is something I could do myself, and I also realized that what I was doing on Instagram, it was good, but it was very short form content. I think the way that Instagram has gone in the last 12 months is that it is like short and snappy reels. It's 30 seconds. And don't get me wrong, I I enjoy making these things, but I didn't feel like it was a platform which I could really educate my audience that well. I felt like I could give them a snippet of the sort of knowledge and the stuff that I was passionate about, but it just isn't something that I really felt like I was able to fully kind of lock in on. So that's why I started the podcast. I wanted to just be able to have that long form content. I wanted to actually get in someone's head for... 20, 30, 40 minutes and actually really deliver a huge amount of value. Um, And from there, that's where I started the podcast. And then I also just wanted a way in which I could kind of uh, like show my listeners how I live my life. So this is why we called it Lean 365 Podcast, because something that I've managed to achieve over the last 10 years, which I don't see every coach achieve, um, is just stay in shape consistently for 10 years. And that's through injuries, you know, that's through challenges, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's a big part of what our program is as well at Fit Lab. So our program is called the Lean 365 program. So that's why we went into that style of podcast. And it's just about my journey. It's about the tactics, some of the strategies that I use, just a lot about how I stay in shape all year round. Um, and that's why we wanted to call it that, you know, any time of the year, the goal is to always be in shape. You know, you're not just doing a transformation to look good for a particular holiday, for a wedding, for whatever. Like we're, we're in shape all the time. And the podcast is basically just, about that level of learning and having guests on as well to kind of share their knowledge and expertise as well um, to get them. In terms of, I suppose, of the, my favorite episodes, <laughs> I don't know, there's so many now, so it's hard to say. Um, we've had some really good guests on there. So, you know, recently had had some people on there that definitely have offered a lot of value. I had a client recently, one of my uh, favorite episodes I recorded literally the other day was one of my clients called Paul. And we just went into his journey of getting into the shape of his life at 50 doing a photo shoot, um, you know, really going, getting to that next level that he was looking to try and get to. Uh, talking through my journey as well. So one of the first podcasts that kind of goes through the framework that we use at FitLab as well. So one big problem that I see as a coach is that people know how to get in shape. You know, sometimes they'll follow the, the wrong approach, but they'll get there, they'll lose the weight, but they won't actually maintain it afterwards. You know, they don't understand the full journey that goes into a transformation. Um, people just think it's about the losing weight part, which isn't the case. Uh, so there's a good a few good episodes on there that talk through the entire you know transformation from losing the weight to then going into the reverse diet to then you know getting yourself to a safer position. So again, there's a few on there, but just general hacks, strategies, nutrition training, mindset. Sometimes I'm quite big on um, telling people that maybe what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. So there's some kind of controversial stuff on the podcast as well, I suppose. But yeah, just all my learnings really and stuff that I feel very passionate about and have you know spent the last 10 years uh teaching people as well and you're an incredible storyteller so i gotta give you i gotta commend you on that so because i was listening to a couple of the episodes before you got before we started this conversation yes yeah yeah what which which, which stories in particular the pectar, you the pectar, your injury the pectar. oh i see yeah yeah so that was that was a big one for me i'm yeah never really had an injury like that before that was at the end of last year um I think it was about 120 I had on the bar. So it was a reasonable amount of weight. Just didn't really think anything of it. Just, you know, just in the gym lifting, we're still warming up. And um, yeah, I just heard heard something go. Obviously, straight away knew exactly what I'd done because I, I my brother has done the same injury, but it wasn't as bad. I had a few other f- people I knew of. Um, and then, yeah, it was, it was definitely was a challenge. I went through a lot of problems in terms of trying to figure out whether it needed the surgery. Um, 
then realizing it did need the surgery, but then being in Dubai, then insurance issues as well. So a bit like America, like probably, you, you know, you need insurance, right? So in the UK, you don't. So we have we have the NHS here, which isn't as good as it used to be, but it's essentially it's healthcare, which we're all entitled to. Me living in Dubai, um, I, I don't know if I would have still been entitled to, to use the NHS, but obviously being in Dubai, I decided not to in the end. So I didn't have my insurance sorted, which is my own fault. I tried to, get, tried to go through the insurance, didn't get it. So basically, it was just this like real challenge of like trying to get the pec tear operation sorted. And obviously, with an injury like that, like you don't have much time. So every single week you leave it, every single month you're leaving it, and you're not getting it repaired. That muscle is essentially getting worse. It's, it's deteriorating even more. Um, but eventually, kind of got it sorted. And actually, ended up having to go to Bulgaria of all places um, to go get the surgery done. Very good surgeon. So no, it's not to say it was um, it was poor healthcare, but that's where that's where I got it about Easter time. And then, yeah, it's just been the rehab in terms of getting back into training. So the first six weeks, literally nothing. You know, I wasn't able to really move around a lot because um, what they also had to do is take tendon graft out of my leg. So they had to operate on my hamstring. So basically that hamstring was pretty knackered as well as you can imagine. So that was a really big learning for me, especially as a coach, because that was probably the first time since I started training where I had a, a solid month where I really couldn't do anything. So that like, it wasn't even like I could go and do my steps, which is something like that's the advice I'd always give to a client if they aren't able to train. I'd always say, look, just go and move because you're going to burn lots of calories. So that was a difficult situation. And I think that's where I had to kind of like develop again and like overcome that in, in certain ways. Um, but now, obviously, yeah, we're in a slightly different position. It's, I think it's been about 12 weeks post-surgery. So Feeling strong, um, still not where I want to be, of course, but it's, it's injuries like this take time. Anytime you tear a ligament or, or tendon, it's, it's going to take a long time to get back to normal again. So just taking these days, it comes really, but it's, yeah, it's definitely been a challenge. It's been a journey, but again, I've learned a lot from it. Kind of goes back to what I said at the start of the podcast. I do believe that anytime you are put through challenging situations and adversity, like you, you come out stronger. So I definitely think that I have come out stronger in a lot of ways. Would I go back and change that? <laughs> To have to save my pec probably <laughs> but at the same time you know everything happens for a reason so at least i'm here today so it could have could have been worse i suppose and i gotta say chris you're at seriously that's just insane they had to go to bulgaria of all places to get the to get the operation yeah i did i could have got it done in dubai so it was a bit of a difficult one really like the the cost of getting it done in Dubai was a lot more than Bulgaria. And it, like, I could have, I could have paid for it. I could have got it done in Dubai because my insurance came back and told me that, that they weren't going to pay for it. But I suppose at that point I was just looking at my options. And I mean, we live in a world now where we, we have got access to people all over the world. You know, you can jump on a plane, you can be anywhere. So I did just want to see like, what, what are the potential options that I can look towards? And, um, you know, I did my research. I didn't just go for some bog, bog standard person that I found on the internet good really well respected surgeon and then yeah bulgaria obviously it's just just it's just a cheap operation so it did cost about a third of the price as to what i would have paid if i was to get it done in the uk or if i was to get it done um in dubai so that's why i just chose to go over to bulgaria but you know what like we made a decent trip of it as well I went out there with my brother it was a nice break um so it wasn't all doom and gloom but yeah of all places that's where where i had to go get it done a bit difficult afterwards some of the nurses didn't speak the best of english but it was you know it was a good operation Got, got it all successfully done and then back to the UK for a few weeks just to recover um, and then back to Dubai after that. So yeah, it's been a bit of a journey over the last, well, since the start of the year, but I think we're we're definitely coming to hopefully the end of that now. No more pet tears. I definitely won't be doing any more flat bench, that's for sure. All righty. I, I, I'll hold you to it. I will hold it to you. Hold it. Oh, you won't, you won't see me do a flat, honestly, like flat bench is not ever, ever on the agenda again. Like I will do a chest press, of course, but that, it, that exercise, I just think is just like, for me, like, I don't want to be a power lifter. I'm, you know, I've done three plates on a bench press. Uh, that's enough. Like, I, I don't want to, don't want to do any more than that after what's happened. I think anytime I even spot someone now on a bench press, like it, it just cringes me out. Cause I'm, I, I've done it a couple of times in Dubai, that like, some of the, some of the big bodybuilders, they maybe look at me and they're like, oh, he must be able to spot me. So then I'll go over and they've got like 140, 160 on a bar or something. And every rep, I'm just, all I see is a pet tear. And I'm like, oh God, like, <laughs> luckily it never happens. But um, it definitely makes you more self-aware. I think there's a lot of psychology that, that goes around injuries and stuff because you, you do look at things differently. Um, but we're all good. So we'll, we'll move on from that, I'm sure. Absolutely. So. Do you have any dream guests? Because I have my dream guests, but who are your dream guests? My my dream guests, did you say? Yes. What, like people who I'd like to get on the podcast and stuff? Correct. 
Oh, it's a tough one. I'm not really sure to be honest. There's a lot of people um in the fitness. I'd love to get I'd love to get someone like Arnie Schwarzenegger on, you know, like someone like that, a big a big name, but that's obviously never gonna happen. Um, there's a few, there's a, a couple of coaches that that I would like to get on the podcast for sure. Um, there's a again, there's a few people that are that are very high in sort of like nutrition and training and stuff like that. In terms of like some of the bodybuilders, I'd love to get someone like Chris Bums there on again, but again, it's never gonna happen. Like these are just obviously like big name, big names people, but I don't think there's anyone um, that comes to mind massively that, that I'd like to get on at the moment. Who is it that you'll uh, iron up to try and get on the podcast then? Well, I mentioned him earlier. Simon Cowell would be great to have. When a, he's the, he is the greatest guy when it comes to reality television and spotting talent. Like, look around. Yeah. Look at all the people that he has helped discover. Kelly Clarkson, Kara, Jennifer Hudson, Carrie Underwood, Adam Lambert, Susan Boyle. Yeah, for sure. No, 100%. I, I've never really, I've, yeah, I've not followed Simon Cowell's journey that much. Obviously, I know who, who he is, but I'm sure he'd be a very interesting character to, to get on the podcast for sure. Um, but yeah. Absolutely. Another one would probably be Oprah, but that's a little way out of my reach. Yeah, we're, we're dreaming big here though, Jacob. At least we've got some big expectations. <laughs> Maybe one day if we slip, slip an invite to these people, they might decide, but... Yeah, I'm not sure. There's a there's a couple of names and stuff of, of people I'd like to get on, but I, I think, yeah, it's definitely going to be along maybe along the side of, of the fitness scene and and um and things like that. A couple of coaches and stuff, but yeah, we've had some good guests on the podcast over the last few months, so um, we'll see where things are at uh, towards maybe the end of the year. Perfect. So I want to go back to the client to the to the client side of this. So what goes through your mind when a client? completes a transformation and goes and goes does that photo and does that photo shoot with you guys yeah for sure it's honestly it's an incredible feeling like i think client photo shoots are my they're definitely my favorite parts of coaching for sure that's why we do them um i just in general anytime a client goes and gets through to their trying to end of their transformation it's, it's such a good feeling i think the thing is is that i don't think people will actually realize how much they get out of a transformation people often just think it's around like you know getting the six pack or, or getting really lean but what they don't realize is like how it actually affects them mentally. Um, you know, the better relationships they have, the better connections they have with their friends and family, the, you know, more energy, more focus they've got on their career. So like, there's so many things that you get out of it. I often say that like just getting the six pack and whatever, that's the byproduct of really what we achieve in the fitness transformation. So it, yeah, it always gives me so much satisfaction when I see clients really fulfill and go through that full potential. Um, but yeah, photo shoots are just incredible. Honestly, like we had, um, we had a couple at the weekends that literally signed up eight weeks ago before the shoot. And, you know, like it was a, any, anyone who does a photo shoot with eight week deadline, like it's always going to be a challenge, a real big challenge. I mean, my photo shoot was seven. I think I did like an eight week photo shoot last year. And obviously I've been training for 10 plus years. It's, it's a long time. And um, it was an incredible feeling because they both absolutely smashed it. They, they both hit their weight targets. You know, they, they had photos together and, like they'd gone through that process as a team and they, it was, yeah, as a coach to see that it was, it was really good. Um, and just in general as well, we had a guy turn up at 19 years old, just thinking to myself, like, there's no way I would have done a photo shoot at 19. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had the confidence. I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And again, that was a, a really good feeling as well. So it's just like, you see clients don't always realize sometimes as well, like how good they actually look. Like we had a guy there that literally looked like he could be on the front of men's health magazine and, I don't think he realized how good he is. You know, he looked in the camera and he could see himself like with the right lighting and, you know, like with the with the pump and stuff like that. And he was like, Jesus, is, is that actually me? And like, give me a fist bump and stuff. And that sort of stuff's incredible because like, I don't think people actually realize sometimes like how how good of a position they've actually got to until they actually then get there in the flesh. So like, I, I genuinely think coaching is is one of the, the best jobs in the world because, you know, you get to fulfill your passion and, and really see people transform and, yeah, luckily, you know, we've had the opportunity to do that with hundreds of people now. And I'm hoping in the future we can we can keep doing it some more. But shoots are an incredible thing. And we've got another one coming up at the end of the year. Um, and I'm looking forward to that one already for sure. So we'll see uh, we'll see what sort of incredible journeys that clients go through to get to that one. I think those are amazing. And I bet you and Matt are going to be like, OK, one day you're going to have it when it comes to the fifth or seventh anniversary or even 10th anniversary of Fit Lab and everyone's still in shape. They're like, OK. How are you yeah. going to do all of that? Because that's like almost a thousand transformations by then. A hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. That That's our goal. I think, um, you know, me and Matt have got very similar passions, very similar visions in terms of where we want it to go. And 
I, you know, obviously have both been through our own journeys and our own transformations as well. Like we're very passionate about taking it to that next level. So yeah, it, it's some exciting times ahead for sure. And I'm, you know, ex really excited and happy that I can obviously do that as well with my brother. So it's, it's an incredible feeling. And uh, I, I, my goal is I'd love to be able to try and stretch out more to, um, to the, the U S as well, actually. And, you know, I've had a couple of clients in the past that have, have been from the U S but it's never really been somewhere that I've managed to, uh, get a name for myself too much so hopefully at some point we can start to expand over there and you know i'd love to come out there and even look at doing some shoots and stuff so we'll see but um maybe that's on the cards for the future if you ever make it to kansas city i promise you this i will yeah. take you to kansas city barbecue and treat you to some of our famous cop that sounds very good to me <laughs> i think the the one thing in america that you can't really go wrong with is definitely the food uh, so definitely be up for that one for sure. I've had a few clients that have gone there on holiday and it's been a difficult place to navigate when it comes to staying on track with their food, but we've, we've done our best. But coffee all day. I'm, I'm very much a coffee guy, so I'm up for that. And for the past couple of years, my coaches have always said to me, I can see TJ and I can see Anthony say, Jacob, take out the foo-foo drinks. And I'm like, okay. And uh, since then I've stuck with the cold brew with almond milk. Yeah. <laughs> can be very difficult what's how do you approach alcohol are you much of a drinker yourself or do you not really uh get involved i with try my best my best not to avoid alcohol at all possible so yeah, i okay. instead of alcohols that's why unfortunately i've gone to the sugar side yeah for sure I, i'm the same I've, I've been off alcohol for a little while now and it's, it's a it's a good feeling i've never really been much of a drinker myself to be honest but this last like two months i wanted to completely come off it and i do feel very good for it so i never really i always say to people like if you really think about the pros and the cons of alcohol, like there's going to be so many more cons than, than pros. So really you got to ask yourself what the point is. Um, but like, I, I get it. I'm a fun guy. Like at the same time that like, you've got to enjoy yourself. So for some people it's, it's in part, it's an important part of their life. I know. Um, one of the last questions I want to ask you is to talk about, like I've had trouble struggling with fitness journey. So if you had the opportunity to meet with people who are struggling with their fitness journeys, what advice would you share with them? What sort of advice would I give to people that are struggling with their fitness journey, did you say? Yes. Yeah, for sure. So I, I think with this one, and this isn't just to, you know, like to, to, to try and blow people my way, but you need to invest in yourself. But that's the most important thing because I think there's so much information out there these days. And I think it's such an overwhelming and there's so many different people that are shouting from different places that I think generally trying to go through a fitness journey yourself is it's just too difficult. And I'm not just saying that because I want people to come and sign up to fit. I've got there's amazing coaches out there. But I think any time that you want to fast track, you know, your results, your progress, and you want to get to a position that you, you need to understand that you're going to get there so much quicker by putting your, you know, potentially investing into the right program. Um, and I've literally speak to people before when, you know, they say that they've been stuck trying to achieve something. They've been trying to get in shape. They've been trying to get a six pack for like 10 years. And I'm like, you could have done that in three months, in four months, if you just invest in yourself and you investing, that's the best thing that you can invest into. Like people see it as a cost sometimes, but they'll go out there and, and spend 600 pounds, $600 on a Gucci t-shirt. And they could have invested that into a coaching program. So I think my advice to anyone who's listening to this is like, just find something that you can invest into, find a program that is, has got great results, has got a great reputation. Um, and if that means you need to save, if that means you need to cut back on spending in different areas, then I think that's what you need to do. I, a lot of people sometimes think they don't have the money for coaching, but if I was to look at where they're spending their money at the moment, I guarantee I could probably pull out the coaching fees for some some really some really good coaching programs so that'd be my biggest advice like why struggle like why spend your life trying to achieve something you know that's potentially you could achieve in just a few months with the right investment um that'd be the first thing i suppose the second thing would be just try not to be perfect um i think that a lot of people will really try and strive for complete perfection on their transformation you know guys typically just get into this like all or nothing approach they'll be clean for one week then they'll come off it um, so I think the other thing would be just like try not to try and try not to be perfect with your nutrition, with your training, accept the bad weeks. Um, in generally, as long as you're consistent in enough for enough time, you're going to see a huge benefit. Uh, yeah, that's the that's one we're going to go with today, Jacob. Absolutely. So, all righty. So last question. Are you ready for it? Yes, I'm ready. Go for it. OK, first of all, where can they connect with you if they're interested about going to Fit Lab coaching next where can they find you on social media? And finally, if they want to listen to the Lean 365 podcast, where can they find that? For sure. Some good questions. So 
if you want to find out a little bit more about FitLab um, and potentially apply, then fitlab.co.uk is our website. So you can see a little bit about myself, background, what our coaching program entails. Um, so that'd be the first place. In terms of where you can connect with me and also find out a lot more about FitLab as well in a bit more depth, I would say Instagram is my biggest platform like most people. So that'd be Chris underscore FitLab. Um, and then from there, you'll see the kind of content I post. You'll see some of the incredible results that we get with our clients. And when I say incredible, like you just go and have a look like that, that's that will that will do the talking. Um, I'm on quite a lot of platforms now, to be honest, LinkedIn, Chris Wright, um, Facebook, all these kind of platforms. I try and have a good omnipresence in terms of being on everything. We're looking at launching a YouTube soon as well. Um, so that'd be the best places to connect with me. And, and in terms of um, uh, what was the last question? Sorry, that was about the podcast, wasn't it? Yeah. So Spotify, Lean365 podcast. I'll be on there. Also on Apple Podcasts as well. Lean365. You'll find me on that too. Um, and then, yeah, go and enjoy some of the episodes on that. There's a lot of value packed. So I'm sure you'll be able to find something that's very useful to where you're at in your current journey. Awesome. So guys, if you missed an episode of the Jake's Take with Jacob IHR podcast, this is our channels on Apple Podcasts, Deezer, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Podcast Addicts, Spotify, and Spreaker. Jake's Take with Jacob IHR. J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Now, are you on social media? Because I'm on social media too. Facebook, Instagram, Threads, Twitter, and YouTube. Jacob Elyashar, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. And once again, just to let you know, jakes.shake.com is turning 12 this year. So for more articles, more interviews and reviews, head to jakes.shake.com. Chris, it was a privilege to have you here. It was great to finally meet you after three years, too. Yeah, it was Jacob. Thanks, th thanks for having me on. Hopefully, your listeners found that very useful. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, in person catch up at some point if I make it across the pond. Absolutely. And if I ever return to London or ever go to Dubai, I will let you know. Of course, one hundred percent. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Goodbye.